Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install totally free Minecraft Bedrock server on Oracle Cloud. This will be an absolutely free instance that will be 24-7 available and you can use it to play with your friends and family in it. So the first thing you need is an Oracle Cloud account and if you don't have one, you can go ahead and open one for free. If you need help with it, go ahead and check out one of my videos on how to set up Oracle Cloud free account. Now once you have your Oracle Cloud account ready, go ahead and log in and go to your compute and then from there you can go ahead and click on create instance once you're in a create compute instance screen you can go ahead and give your instance a name i'm going to call mine minecraft and then from here you can leave the availability domain to the default in case there is no free resources at this availability domain you can go ahead and check one of the others available to see if you have more luck there but again you can just go ahead and leave it to the default then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and change the image. So we're going to need to select Ubuntu as Ubuntu is the only officially supported server for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Then I'm going to go ahead and pick the canonical Ubuntu 2204 and I'm going to go ahead and click on select image. You're going to want to change your shape as the default one here would be one that you have to pay for. So I'm going to go ahead and click on change shape. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on specialty and previous generations as this is where the always free tier eligible instance is hiding. Then here you can go ahead and click on the check mark and you're going to notice that this one is only one CPU and one gig of memory. And that may seem a little smaller, but it is free and to be honest, if you're only going to be having like maybe up to 10 to 15 people playing on your server, that should be plenty. So you can go ahead and click on select the shape. And then down here, you can set up your networking. In my case, I only have one VCN and one subnet. So there's not too much I can change here. But if you have multiple VCNs and multiple subnets, make sure that you put your instance on the one that you want it to be in. You can leave this by the defaults here and down here, you're going to want to generate a key pair unless you have a key pair that you want to upload in my case i don't have one that i want to use so i'm just going to go ahead and generate the new one and i'm just going to download my private key then here for the boot volume the default boot volume is 50 gigs so you can just leave it to it unless you want more disk space you can get up to 200 gigs from oracle for free next thing i want you to do is go down here where it says show advanced options and we're going to click on this link and down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste a cloud in its script and that script will set up my Minecraft server. That way, once the instance is up and running, my server will be ready for me to connect and start playing. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my script in here and I'm going to share the script with you in the description under my video. So I'm going to quickly go over the script now so you see what the script will do. So the first thing is we're going to collect some variables here. And if you want, you can go ahead and change some of those that fit your likings. But I'm setting up these two ports for my instance. Then I'm going to uh, call my server bedrock server. I'm going to set up a Minecraft user. That will be the user that will run my Minecraft server. And then my installation directory will be under opt and bedrock dash server. I'm going to check, make sure that this script is being run with a sudo user. And then the next thing that the script will do it will go ahead and confirm that the operating system that we are running it on is Ubuntu or Debian. As these are the only two that Bedrock server will work on. Then it's going to make sure that there is no already Bedrock server installed in our installation directory. And then it's going to go ahead and make sure the two ports that we selected are not already taken by another service. And if all that checks out, it's going to go ahead and it's going to update its package list and it's going to install wget and zip and supervisors as we're going to need those later to install the bedrock server the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and download the bedrock server from minecraft's official website unpack it and then we're going to move it into our installation directory we're going to change the ownership of that directory and all the files in it and then we're going to go ahead and apply some of those variables into our server properties file the next thing we'll do is go ahead and create a supervisor configuration file that will set up our supervisor CTL that will monitor and control our Minecraft server. And then the next thing we'll make sure that IP tables is allowing traffic on the port that we specified earlier in that script. And once all that's done, our bedrock server should be up and running. So again, once you have this script put in here, you can just go ahead and click on create. 
Well, one thing to mention here is you may see this little summary here and most likely same as mine will show that you'll be charged two dollars and 12 cents per month for boot volume this is incorrect it's a well-known issue with oracle just so you know as long as you're within that 200 gigs of free disk space you shouldn't occur any charges so just ignore this one and again once you have the script in here and you're happy with the way it looks you can go ahead and click and create and that will start provisioning your machine and running the script that will install Minecraft Bedrock Server for you. Now, once your public IP for your instance is available, you can go ahead and just copy it in your clipboard and we can go ahead. And first thing we wanna do is go ahead and fix the permissions on the private key that we just generated. So I'm gonna go ahead and list my downloads directory. And this is the key, as you can see, the permissions that the key has wouldn't allow me to connect to the server. So I'm gonna have to change those. And to do that, all I have to do is run mod and we wanna set it to 600. And then I'm gonna give it the name of the key here. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and try to SSH into your server. So we're gonna say it's SSH-I, then I'm gonna give it the name of our key. And then here, the user for the Ubuntu server on Oracle Cloud would be Ubuntu. And then you can give it your public IP. And again, I got my public IP from this page here, from right here. And now it says that my server is running. As long as the SSH server is up, I should be able to connect. Here you can say yes. And there you go, I'm in. So now the next thing you wanna do is because that init script is probably already, is probably still running. What I like to do is I just tail my syslog and that way I will know when it's all done. So I'm gonna go ahead here and say var log syslog. And as you can see, it is running, it is installing stuff. So I'll just give it some time here. And after a few minutes of stuff running, you should see something similar to this, where it tells you that, all, that port 19132 is opening. And down here is gonna tell us that our cloud and its script has finished. So you can go ahead and control C out of here. And to confirm that our server is running, there's a couple of things that we can do. First, we can do SS dash n l u t and that will show us the ports that our server is listening on and as you can see our server currently is listening on 19132 which means that our bedrock server is up and running and we can also do sudo supervisor ctl status and that will show us that our bedrock server is running the next thing you can do is go ahead and connect to the console of your server and that way you can actually see uh, what's going on and you'll be able to communicate with that server. So to do that, all you have to do is run sudo supervisor ctl fg space and then you can give it the name of that process here. So I'm just gonna run it like this. And as you can see, this is our server and it is up and running. So the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and open this port 19132 in your security group or security list as they call them in Oracle Cloud. So I'm gonna grab this port from here. And remember, this is a UDP port. And then I'm gonna go back to my Oracle Cloud console. And then from here, I'm gonna search for cloud and I'm gonna go under virtual cloud networks and once you're in virtual cloud networks you're going to want to go here to bcn and then you're going to want to go here into security list and click on default security list once you're in a default security list you're going to want to add a new ingress rule and we're going to allow access for everyone from the entire internet and if you want, you can restrict that to your home IP or however you wanna handle this. But for now, I'm just gonna do it for everyone. So everyone is um, allowed to connect to our server. And for a port destination, I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna put 19132. And again, if you change that port, make sure you put the port that you selected. And that port is a UDP port. So make sure you change that many times People forget that it is UDP port and leave it TCP and then they wonder why it's not working. And then under the description here, you can just go ahead and give it a description. And all I'm gonna say here that it is a Minecraft port. So next time when I see that port in those security groups, I will know what it is for. So you can go ahead and click on add an ingress rule. And once you have that rule added, you should be set and you should be able 
to connect to your instance. So I'm gonna go ahead now and open Minecraft on my mobile device and you can go ahead and click on play. And then you can go under servers here and scroll down and click on add server. You can give your server a name. I'm gonna call mine Oracle free. And then down here you can enter your server IP address and you can get it. In my case, I'm gonna grab it from up here. Or you can get it from your Oracle cloud consoles. So in my case, it is 129.80.203.49. And then you can go ahead and as long as you have the correct port here, in my case, I use default ports, you can just go ahead and hit play. And as you can see here on my console, my player is connected to the server. And as you can see, I can look around and I'm into my Minecraft server and I'm playing around. And if you want, you can also just give it a little test here and you can run a command from your console. You can just say, let's say, weather rain and that should send some rain into my game and there you go as you can see it is raining so now the next thing that i want to show you is how to exit from here all you have to do is do control and c and that will take a few extra seconds and it will take you out from there but the your game will still be on and running um, the nice thing about this script is that it is already set for you. So if you want to run a second server on the same box, all you have to do is rerun that script. And to do that again, you can go ahead and get that script uh, from the link from the description of my video. And all you need to do is set up a new file for yourself. So um, in my case, I'm into my Ubuntu's home directory and I'm just going to create a file called minecraft install sh and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna paste that script in here so this exact same script is here and all you need to do to set up a new server is change the ports because these ports are already being used so i'm gonna say three four and then here i'm gonna say three five and I'm gonna call this one bedrock server new and the Minecraft user is gonna be the same. So everything else could stay the same. Then you can go ahead and close this. Oh, what happened now? Hold on. Oh, I have, I had this here, sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead here and say nano here and I'm gonna paste my server. Sorry about that. And then I'm gonna go to the top of the file again and let's go ahead and make those changes. Uh, so that's gonna be 34. And then 35, again, we said this is going to be called a free server dash new. And I'm going to go ahead and save and close my file. And then I'm going to run sudo bash install and that will run. And it should install my new server in a couple of minutes. And I will technically have two servers running from this same box. They're just going to be running on a different ports. And what I'm going to do actually is now uh, from my mobile device, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect from here. So go ahead and quit from this game. And while this is loading, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add another server here and I'll call this one Oracle Free New. And that will be the same IP address. So 129.80.203.49. And this time our port is 19134. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 19134. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this and now i'm going to go ahead and connect to this server and again what i can do from here is oh actually that's not going to work because again as i mentioned earlier i'm going to need to go ahead first and open that port into my security group so let's go and do that quickly so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and then on here i'm going to add another ingress rule and again i'm going to say 0000 slash zero and here's the name of the port and I'll say Minecraft new. And you can actually put both those in the same rule, just give it a range. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it like this. And there you go, I made a mistake that I told you earlier. I set it up to a TCP, so I'm gonna have to go and change this and make it UDP. And then if I go ahead and save it, now it looks a little bit better. So now if I go back to my terminal window, that looks good. And if I go ahead and click join the server, now it should work.
And again, you can run this command here uh, to connect to our command line interface console. And that way we can see uh, what's going on in that server. Uh, what's going on? What did I do wrong? The Minecraft bedrock server. Oh, actually that would be Minecraft bedrock server new, right? Let's just check to make sure. So if I say sudo supervisor CTL status, you can see that we have two servers running and this, if we want to connect to this one, we actually going to have to connect to the one that it's called new. So if I say FG like this and copy and paste, and that will connect us to that server. As you can see, my user just joined this server and I can send commands to it. So that's it. This is how you set it up using that script. I hope you like it. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions or any comments, please go ahead and comment in the comment section under the video. If you want to see more of my videos, please go ahead and subscribe for my channel. Thank you for watching.